I can't believe it's Friday again, which means Copycat Friday Episode 2. Last week we got to see the second trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. We also learned that we have to wait another year for the game. I can't wait. Anyway, today we're recreating the GTA 6 style animation from the trailer in Adobe After Effects. But first, let me know which GTA was your first. Mine's Vice City. Let's open up After Effects. The first thing we're gonna do is create a text layer. To do that, select the text tool on top in the toolbar and click somewhere in the composition panel. Instead of typing VI, I'm gonna type AE for After after Effects. Alright, now to customize text, open up the Properties panel. If you can't find it, go to the Window menu on top and you'll find it in here. In this panel, you can choose a font. I'm going for Gotham Black. It's a free font you can find online. Don't worry about anything else yet. Next, we're gonna turn it into a shape layer. That's needed for the next effects to work. To do that, select the text layer in the timeline and go to the Layer menu on top. Then go to Create and click on Create Shapes from Text. As you can see, this will automatically hide the original text layer. You don't need that anymore unless you're planning on changing up the text afterwards. Now expand the properties of your text shape and right here you will find the A and the E layer. Now to stay organized, hold down shift or control and select both the shapes. Then right click and choose group shapes. This will create a little group of course. Next make sure group 1 is selected. Go to the add menu and find the gradient stroke. Once you have it, expand it and increase the stroke width to around 40 to 50. Then to change the the colors of the gradient, click on Edit Gradient. In here, set the first color to a darker purple. Then select the second color and make it even darker. When you're done, click on OK. Next, we're gonna adjust the direction of the gradient. You can do that by adjusting the start and end point in the timeline. Or you can just click and drag the dots in the composition panel. Make sure the darker purple is on top and the lighter one at the bottom. And now it's time to add a second gradient stroke. This time, just select the one we already created and press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Now we're gonna leave the duplicate as it is. Expand the first stroke again and set the width to around 20 this time. Click Edit Gradient again to adjust the colors. This time set the first one to a darker purple again and the second one to green closely to yellow. That way you'll see an orange color in the middle. Click on OK and now in the timeline adjust the end point all the way up. That will make the green disappear and only show the orange or yellow. Of course go back and forth in the gradient editor until you have a color you prefer. Beautiful. Now, before we add this beautiful background, I want to tell you about Storyblocks, something that every editor should use. It's the best plugin for Premiere Pro and After Effects. Every video editor needs a stock library, and this is the one I use. On Storyblocks, you'll get unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. Everything you need in one place. 4K and HD video, templates, music and sound effects, unlimited downloads, all without leaving Premiere or After Effects. After clicking the download button, your file will appear right in your project panel. You can choose a monthly or annual plan with no hidden costs. Storyblocks, thank you so much for making my videos better and thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Now, on other stock libraries, half of the videos are AI generated nowadays. On Storyblocks, you'll find real artist created stock media, which is irreplaceable for creating genuine connections with your audience. Generative AI is cool, but it can't replicate footage that captures the genuine human experience with stories and emotions. That's why I will always keep using Storyblocks on all my channels, literally to enhance the story I'm telling. Now, to make things even easier, Storyblocks created restock collections to celebrate authentic stock content created by real artists and that will help you tell more powerful and authentic stories with unique footage. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price head over to storyblogs.com slash oh slash Premiere Basics or just click the link down below. Oh and don't forget to download the awesome Premiere Pro and After Effects plugin. Let's continue with this beautiful GTA 6 animation. Let's start by adding a background. So we want to replace the white fill of the text with a Vice City background. I generated this one with ChatGPT. Super easy. Drag it in the timeline all the way on top. Feel free to scale and position it so it covers your text. The first thing you want to do is go to the contents of the shape layer. Then go to the letter A and then fill. Change the white fill to black 
black. That's needed for an effect we're gonna create later on. Then of course, do the same thing for the letter E. Once that's done, duplicate the shape layer we created and hit enter to rename it. I'll call it palm trees. Now expand the properties and remove the two gradient strokes by selecting them and hitting delete. Select the palm trees image and go to track mat. If you don't see this, right click, then columns and then enable modes. Now link the track mat to the shape layer without the strokes. And there you go. You can still scale and reposition your palm trees image if you'd like. And now we're gonna add a slightly transparent gradient on top of the image. To do that, right click in the timeline, go to new, then solid. Let's call it gradient overlay or something. You can just leave the color to black, then click on OK. In the effects library, find the gradient ramp effect. Then of course, drag it on your solid layer. Now in the effect controls, set the start color of the gradient to purple, almost blue. Then click OK to apply it. Now set the end color to yellow. This will create a beautiful gradient. Then again, click on OK. Next, select the gradient layer and in the composition panel, decrease the size until it matches the text. In the timeline, with the solid selected, hit T on your keyboard to open up the opacity settings. Then set the opacity of the gradient layer to around 35%. Next, click and drag the pick whip tool from the track mat menu to the palm tree shape without the strokes. There you go. And now it's time to blow some life into the palm trees. Pam, pop, pam, pam. To do that, find Gaussian blur in the effects library and drag it on the palm trees. Increase it a little to make the image smoother. Next, find the turbulent displace effect and also drag it on your palm trees clip. In here, set the amount to 6 and the size to around 100. Now in the timeline, expand the effects of the palm trees image and in here, we're gonna animate the evolution. Set the playhead to the beginning of the clip and set an evolution keyframe. Then move to the end of the clip and increase the evolution. If you play it back now, you can see the palm trees moving. That already looks awesome. It's time to add the GTA 6 text or in our case Copycat Friday. Let's start by grabbing the text tool in the toolbar, then in the composition panel type in Copycat or whatever you want. Next go to the properties panel and make sure the fill is set to white. Then for the font I recommend using Price Down, a free font you can download online and it looks like the GTA font. In the composition panel scale and position your text layer exactly how you want it. Next make sure the stroke is set to black. Set the stroke option to fill over stroke. Then increase the stroke until the text has a nice black stroke around the fill. Now to create the second word, all you need to do is select the first one, which in my case is copycat, and then press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Now in the composition panel, drag it downwards and then double click it. That way you can adjust the text to Friday. Of course, make sure to drag the Friday underneath the copycat, that way the Y of the copycat word overlaps beautifully. Now we're gonna turn these layers into shapes too. So right click one, then find create and click on convert shapes from text. Then do the same thing for the other layers of course. You can now drag the original text layers all the way to the bottom or what you can do as well is enable the shy guy right here and then click the hide toggle. All layers will then be hidden. Simply click again to toggle them back. Little extra trick for you guys. Next we're gonna add a new gradient stroke to the text. No need to create a new one just go to the contents of the first text layer select the gradient stroke we created there and hit ctrl c to copy it. Then go back to the contents folder of the other layer and hit ctrl plus v to paste the gradient. Now simply increase the stroke width and then play around with the start and end point to turn the gradient around. Once that's done, click on edit gradient. Now adjust the colors in here to make it go from a darker purple to a lighter purple. Then do the exact same thing for the second text, only this time make it go from a lighter purple to orange. That looks beautiful already. And now we're gonna animate everything we just created, starting with the copycat Friday text. Let's start by adding a glow. First we're gonna pre-compose our text. Select them both and press Ctrl plus Shift plus C on your keyboard. Give it a name, in my case Copycat Friday. Then make sure Move All Attributes into the new composition is enabled. Next head over to the Effects library and find the glow effect. Then drag it on the pre-comp. Once it's applied, set the glow threshold to 0%. Then increase the radius to about 60 to 70%. Now head over to the timeline and expand the properties of the composition. Then Grab the playhead, move a little forward in time and set the glow intensity keyframe. Then set it to about 0.4. Now move a second or two forward in time and set the intensity to zero. This creates a glow animation. Back in the effect controls, set the glow operation to none. Next choose the A and B colors for the glow. Then leave color A to white and open up the color picker for color B. Set this one to pink. This will create a beautiful glow animation. Now we're gonna create a mask on our pre-comp to make the text appear. Click the 
rectangle tool and draw it around the entire screen. Then expand the mask properties and set a mask path keyframe on the same moment as the end of the glow animation. Then move back in time to the moment where the glow starts. Now select the bottom points of the mask and drag it all the way up. That will make the text appear together with the glow animation. Already super beautiful. Of course, select the last keyframe of the mask path animation and hit F9 to ease it in. Next, increase the mask feather to make it look smooth. By the way, if you want, add a drop shadow to the pre-comp that will separate it more from the background. Now it's time to animate the start of the text animation. So first, select all the layers in your layer panel, except for the Copycat Friday comp, and hit T on your keyboard. This will open up the opacity property for all the clips. Now set an opacity keyframe. Because they're all selected, you'll get an opacity keyframe on all of them. Now move a second back in time and set the opacity to zero. Now play around with the position of the opacity keyframes to make sure it comes in before the Copycat Friday text appears. Great. Next, select the AE shape layer and hit Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Then drag the bottom one all the way down. Call it AE intro or something. Now press D on your keyboard again to open up opacity. Then remove the keyframes and set opacity to 100. We're gonna change a few things in here. First, we're gonna remove the gradient strokes. We don't need them. Now, if you go back in time, your screen should be black. Next, we're gonna find the glow effect and drop it on your layer. Then in the effect controls, set the glow based on to alpha channel. Set the threshold to zero and increase the radius until it looks separated enough. Then set the intensity to 0.3. Make sure the position is set to behind and the glow operation to normal. For the glow, make sure the A and B colors are selected. Then set the A color to white and the B color to pink. That will create this glowing outline around the text. Next, select the layer and hit Control shift c to pre-compose it. We're gonna create the same mask animation as we did with the other text layer. So we can just go and copy it by pressing Control plus C and then paste it on your clip by pressing Control plus V. Of course, readjust the keyframes to make it start around the same time as the palm trees start appearing. All right, we're almost there. One more thing, press D to open up opacity and animate the opacity property of the pre-comp from 100 to zero. Do that when the second text starts appearing. And that's it, this looks super awesome. Did you know that you can actually create this animation in Premiere Pro as well? You don't believe me? <laughs> Click here to find out. Thank you guys so much for watching.